Many times when I'm driving, I use this time to think about preparedness. What I've done, what I haven't done, and what are the next steps? The journey of being a prepper is a long and challenging one, often viewed as a process rather than a destination. While prepping involves setting and achieving certain goals, it begs the question, can someone ever truly reach the point where they are as prepared as they either want to or need to be? And if they believe they've arrived at that point, what should they do next? And that's what this video is about. It's not uncommon for preppers to feel like they've finished their preparations, having set a specific level of readiness as their goal. Once that point is reached, there can be a sense of relief as if they've completed a task. However, that doesn't necessarily mean they're truly done. And the question should be asked, what should preppers do when they feel they've reached the end of their journey? Let's go ahead and go over a few things that can answer those questions for you. First things first, you need to reevaluate your risks. You need to, I mean, your risk essential is a crucial part of prepping. Determining the risks one faces, uh, how likely they're going to occur, and how serious their impact could be. Preppers take action to mitigate those risks and protect their families. However, just because risks have been evaluated once doesn't mean the work is done forever. Risks evolve. Natural disasters may remain constant, but other risks like political instability or global pandemics can shift. For example, concerns about North Korea, EMP attack, were much higher years ago, while today the threat of biological warfare and pandemics feels more immediate. It's important to assess these risks regularly to stay prepared for what may come. The next thing you need to do is you need to take a fresh look at emergency plans. Having emergency plans in place is the cornerstone of preparedness, but these plans need to be reviewed and updated regularly. Changes in personal circumstances such as a new job, children growing up, or new living conditions can impact how those plans function. What worked before may no longer be effective. Family members, roles in an emergency may shift with older children capable of taking on more responsibility. Additionally, plans for bugging out should be reconsidered. Preppers learn over time that some scenarios they once thought required a bug out may not, while others they hadn't considered may present a real need. Plans should adapt as the prepper's understanding of the resources evolve. All right, you slackers, listen up. Did you know that we actually have a shoot, no shoot expert who's going to be speaking at Prep Stock? He's one of our lecturers, and he's going to tell us all about how to how to do the things that we're supposed to be doing lawfully with our firearms, situations, and things of that nature. So if you have got your tickets for Prep Stock 2024, Nebo, North Carolina, 12th through the 13th of October this year, the sky is not going to fall. You're going to survive. The world will continue to spin. Go get them now. Link in the description. Another thing we should think about is evaluating the bug out shelter. For many, creating a proper bug out survival shelter comes later in their prepping journey. Often after addressing more immediate needs at home, while the idea may be a rem as remote as a cabin in the woods, it's not always feasible in the early stages of prepping. However, as life progresses and finances allow, investing in such a shelter might become possible. If someone already has a survival retreat, they should ensure it's well stocked and equipped with necessary resources like water, hunting opportunities, and potential for gardening. Knowing the area and any nearby risks like dangerous neighbors is just as important. The shelter should be a reliable place to survive, not just a hypothetical retreat. And now we need to look at uh, areas of improvement. No matter how prepared someone may feel, there's always room for improvement. New survival gear, techniques, or strategies can provide better results than older methods. Preppers should evaluate whether new equipment or ideas are truly superior to what they already have. Just because something is new doesn't mean that it's better. 
There are many gimmicks in the survival industry, but thoughtful updates can enhance preparedness. The bug out bag is a good example. While a prepper may have had one for years, there's always room for adjustments and upgrades based on new gear and evolving needs. And lastly, pick a new skill to learn. Survival isn't just about gear, it's about skills. A well-prepared prepper can make do with fewer tools by relying on their knowledge and ability. As preppers advance, many explore new skills like homesteading, off-grid living, and self-sufficiency. Beyond basic survival, there's value in learning skills that could help you rebuild society after a major disaster. If a, if, if a world-altering event occurs, having practical skills like blacksmithing, hide tanning, or weaving could be invaluable. Society may regress technologically, and those who can provide essential services or products will be crucial for the rebuild. Now, for preppers who feel they've reached a plateau, it's important to recognize that preparedness is an ongoing journey. Regularly reassessing risks, updating plans, improving shelters, seeking better methods, and learning new skills ensures they are always ready for the unexpected and contribute to the survival and rebuilding of society post-disaster. I hope this little talk helped you. As usual, if you want to support the channel, there's links below to join up with the YouTube membership. And uh, at the minimum, do me a favor. Give me that thumbs up going out the door. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. There's a lot more videos coming down the pipe. As usual, stay safe, have a great day, and I shall see you when I see you. Bye-bye.